एवरीवन वेलकम टू द कवरेज ऑफ इंडस एंड बैंक रिजल्ट फॉर क्यू वन टू जीरो टू फोर इन टर्म्स ऑफ निफ्टी इंडस एंड इज एट नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन राइट नाउ इन टर्म्स ऑफ मार्केट कैप इट इज एट द वर्ज ऑफ गोइंग बिलो वन लैख करोड़ मार्केट कैप ऑल्सो इन द निफ्टी फिफ्टी इट इज द लोएस्ट रैंक इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रॉक्सिमिटी टू फिफ्टी टू वीक लो आई हेव रिसेंटली इंट्रोड्यूस्ड अ फियर एंड ग्रीड इंडेक्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ इट्स रिलेटिव स्कोर इंडस एंड इज एक्चुअली ऑन द फियर साइड at the time of preparing this video axis bank topped the fear list followed by sbi tata consumer bajaj auto icici hdfc note that this is a custom model which is evolving right now so don't use it for any investment decision in terms of all banks in india indusind is at number 10 of course hdfc bank is a number 1 bank this is based upon market cap followed by icici sbi which is a largest public sector bank now if we filter out the public sector banks then indusind is at number 6 The Indus Indian Bank PE is twelve point one eight. Only federal bank in the top ten have a lower PE than Indus Indian. In terms of PE G, Indus Indian is at point five five. Axis is lower. ICICI is lower primarily because of the fast growth. In terms of stocks performance, the stock has not actually given net returns to long term investors. And of course, this was the pandemic fall. Since then, the bank has been on the path of recovery. Higher tops, higher bottoms. Hopefully. the next higher top will be achieved soon especially with the mood nifty is in right now now the eps of the bank has been riding steadily it has it currently is at 115 the dividend payout ratio of 14.4% is pretty good the eps has been going up steadily however the p e ratio has been going down or remaining consistent of late hasn't gone up this was the p e ratio of the bank when it was growing a lot this point is a unique point there are two events which happened there the bank got a new ceo and the same month nearly the same time the lockdown happened because of the pandemic look at the volumes of indusind in this period now before we review the results let me quickly walk you through two or three points which are very important from the stock fundamentals perspective one is that indusind is at number 49 in the list it may fall off the cliff if it does not increase because all other companies are increasing rapidly in fact some companies may already be at a market cap higher than indusind that will be terrible for the stock because it will lose lot of interest a lot of mutual funds a lot of indices based upon which investing happens all that will be sold off in the market and the stock will crash terribly this is a very interesting analysis i am working upon it is based upon willful defaulters declared by the companies which is the banks the list is sorted on willful default au bank tops the list this is more than market cap of most banks in this list the next one is axis bank 1 lakh crore bank of india 70000 crores indusind bank is here 18000 crores of willful defaults at a market cap of 1 lakh 7000 crores now i have added the sales column here the ratio of willful default to sales and willful default to market cap are very interesting au bank has 1026% which is nearly 10x of their sales as a default amount and a market cap wise 252% in case of indusind bank 37% default to sales ratio and 16.7% default to market cap ratio now this ratio cannot be looked at in isolation because a lot of clean up has happened so for example if you look at sbi the default to sales ratio is at 0.55% and 0.32% for the market cap however the gross npa is at 2.25% and net npa is at 0.5% net npa is okay but gross npa wise this number is pretty high still bank of india 5% gross npa so indusind has reported gross npa as 1.92% and 0.6% as the net npa so this indicator bank has had the problems however it has come over the problems by recognizing the npas the clean up has been done and provisioned as deemed necessary by the bank the problem comes when the gross npa net npa numbers are being carried on the books now what happens is if some of this default is recovered say via auctions of whatever was kept as collateral then that money comes back to the balance sheet as an exceptional item for that quarter next we'll talk about the indusind's official presentation discuss the results and finally what i am planning to do with the stock the june quarter revenue was 12547 crores the previous trailing quarters were all lesser there has been no dip in the revenue this is a trend since june 2021 continuously going up in terms of revenue interest income also is going up 
employee cost is in control now other income for all banks dips in q1 compared to the previous quarter this has happened for most banks including hdfc icici as a result profit before tax obviously takes a dip that tax number is at consistent 25% so the bank is not playing around with the tax numbers to move net profit up or down so net profit dip q1 q is primarily because of the other income dip year on year basis there is a minor uptick only similarly year on year eps minor change only now year on year the gross npa reported by the bank has gone up a little about 0.1% Net NPA also 0.58% has become 0.6%. So people who go too much micro into NPA numbers, they might not like this number. For June 2024, promoters very minor dip. The promoter here is the Hindujas group. FIs have reduced their stake by slightly lesser than 2%. This has mostly been bought by DIIs and a little increase in the public shareholding. These patterns are exactly what I want to avoid. But the numbers in context are too low to influence a decision right now. I would watch the FIIs to be selling here. If this number changes and FII numbers dip say below 35%, then I would take it as a bad sign. The reason I say this is in the last year, November 15, 2023 is the news, Indescent was included in the MSCI Global Index. Most stocks that were included with Indescent have gone up significantly since then. Now, Indescent got about $300 million worth of inflows as a part of this inclusion. This is mostly foreign money. If the index excludes it for performance reasons, then at least this amount and lot more which was invested earlier will certainly flow out. So that is why I was saying watch out for the FIA numbers. This is the published result of the bank, provision other than tax and contingency. Q1 of previous year, it was 991 crore. In the previous quarter, it reduced to 950 crores. This quarter, this has gone up 1050 crores. So bank has provisioned already the numbers it expects to go bad. Indices publishes usually a very good PPT along with its results. One of the best things about the bank is that the overall bank's balance sheet is very well diversified. Corporate banking, consumer banking, nearly 50-50. In specific, microfinance share has gone down. For most of the bank's life, vehicle finance has been the biggest business. The key highlights for the previous quarter as per the bank, year on year, the loans grew by 15%, quarter on quarter 1%. Deposits have increased 15% year on year, 4% quarter on quarter. The interest rates offered by Indescent are pretty competitive on the higher side compared to HDFC, ICIC banks of the world. CASA, the annual growth is 6%, but the entire industry is right now suffering. Term deposits grew 21% year on year, but 6% quarter on quarter. Now this should be okay because the loan business is not growing at that, that space. In fact, the bank has probably more cash than what they need for the loans. The assets increased 14% year on year, 3% quarter on quarter. Similarly, NII or net interest income 11% year on year, 1% quarter on quarter. Other income I already mentioned, it was 10% year on year and minus 3% this quarter. Revenue 11%, here it is literally unchanged. Operating profit down 3% compared to 3% up year on year. Net profit quarter on quarter down 8% compared to 2% year on year growth. And I am down very little. Return on assets 20 basis points down year on year, 20 basis points down quarter on quarter. If you look in isolation, this looks like the bank has not grown at all, or in fact, this is a negative quarter. But looking at the other banks' performance, how they have done in their results, this is not a fantastic quarter or good quarter for sure, but I would not call it a bad quarter either. This is the microfinance part which I was talking about. There is clearly a dip here. 1.3 crore customers in rural India. This is the CASA issue. 40, 39, 38, 38, 37. If you are interested, then the complete NPA data is available here. So first point, the results are okay, not great, not too bad. Gift Nifty is indicating a 2% gap up, so Indescent may enjoy that right tomorrow. But tomorrow I mean Monday 29th of July. Nifty wise, the bank is in a bit of precarious position. The bank better do something to not fall off. I'm sure they would be aware of the situation. MSCI is the third thing. I don't think MSCI will remove the bank from the index unless it is removed from Nifty. There may be a lot of downgrades also from global rating agencies in that case. All this 
ensures that the bank's stock has gone down and is literally at a 52 week low right now as of now i do have long term holdings so i'll probably wait and watch the next week i won't buy more for sure long run wise i would actually buy if the stock goes up so currently the stock is hovering around 1400 i would probably say if this crosses say 1600 kind of levels that will increase the probability of these events not happening if it falls i might book losses and get out so if i was to draw a line there are more reasons for selling than for buying right now but the risk reward ratio is in favor of buying if the operating parameters improve if you have any questions on the analysis let me know in the comment section i'll dig deeper and let you know what is your thought would you like to buy sell hold thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video